What's happening, everybody? Brent Dax here. We're live. It's Syracuse Basketball Post Game presented by Kraus Health. We're here on the Syracuse Orange Basketball Facebook page, live on Twitter and on YouTube. Ooh, rough night. Duke dominates at the JMA Wireless Dome tonight. 77 to 55 is your final score. Syracuse falls to 16 and 11 on the season, 9 and 7 in ACC play. Their three game winning streak is snapped by a Duke team that hits 13 three pointers. That's an ACC high. We'll go inside the numbers here shortly, but dominates on the boards. Uh, Syracuse could not get any flow going offensively. They have just seven assists on the night. And uh, Duke, uh, not one of the better Duke teams to come into the Dome. It was thought to be pretty much a fair fight here uh, between Syracuse and Duke, but uh, not the case. As Duke now has beaten Syracuse eight straight times, and they've won 10 of their last 11 games against the Orange. So your comments, uh, welcome uh, throughout the night here. We'll go inside the numbers on this one as well. Let's uh, get it going here. As Brian says, Brent, love the show, but what's left to say? This was everything. They're not built for the ACC. One can argue better built for the NCAA, but there's no way in hell we're going to get there. That's a tough loss, as Bay says. Doug notes 55 points on offense, 11 threes, and still refuses to get out of the zone. Sad in L.A. for Michelle. The pass fake on the zone does wonders for Pittsburgh and Duke. Iris jumps in to say, so we went from one of the best games they played all year to one of the worst, not competitive Al notes. Lori says, well, that was horrible. What happens to the players from the NC State game? Yeah, the thing is, NC State was 9 of 34 from three-point range. They struggled to get to that point. Duke was much more efficient. Uh, they tore apart the Syracuse zone. They moved the ball. They played great defense on Jesse Edwards. There's some troubling offensive numbers for the Orange. And you know, this kind of iso ball, lack of ball movement thing that Syracuse does, it can win against Georgia Tech and Boston College and Florida State. And look, it worked against NC State Tuesday, but remember, Syracuse got balance on offense against NC State. Five of uh, th their five starters all in double figures, and Jesse Edwards dominated that game. Jesse Edwards got double teamed at times, triple teamed by Duke in the paint tonight. Look, this, this is a Duke team that came in, one of the better rebounding teams in the country. They've held opponents to, I believe it's now 23 of 27 games this season. They've held opponents below their season average, and there's just a certain you know checklist you got to go down in order to be competitive, even against this Duke team that's not one of their better teams in recent years. I mean, it's a tournament team, but it's going to be an eight or a nine seed at this point. And um, Syracuse did, certainly did not do the things they needed to stay competitive in this game, let alone uh, to be in this game tonight. As Dave says, can't wait for the day. We see an actual offense. Hard to watch when the other team moves the ball so well. 22 assists to seven tonight uh, for Duke. As Michelle notes, although Duke's 11-1 and with their players healthy, Brent Whitehead back along with Filipowski. Yeah, they uh, had a bunch of injuries, illness uh, once they got healthy. And by the way, the only game they've lost in that stretch is that game to Virginia last weekend, and they got screwed in that game by the officials, if you remember that. Yeah, Duke didn't get the call, believe it or not, right? As Jim says here, Bayheim and the staff did not have them prepared for Duke's defense. Iris jumps back in to say Joe and Judah combined for 39 of Syracuse's 55 points. Jesse only had five points and five rebounds, and I believe only had three uh, field goal attempts in this game, right? Chris says, Brent, let's not worry about attendance. They haven't given us anything to support for five years. Uh, 31,063 in the Dome tonight, uh, FYI. Jason says, can I hear a fan chime in telling us how hard the team played? <laughs> they didn't even play that hard, to be honest with you, once the air kind of came out of the building in this one. All right, you guys continue to go at it here in the comments, and you're doing a great job as always here. I'm going to leave Doug's comment on the screen for a minute here because I think that's what we're seeing from the Syracuse offense, and it's too much iso ball. Shire, I think, is running a lot more plays than Syracuse is. He certainly got a size advantage and, and a matchup advantage in this game in a lot of ways there, but that's what we saw from Syracuse tonight. Just a offense fizzle, couldn't move, couldn't pick, couldn't get Jesse the ball, which was tough against double and triple teams. Filipowski in there, lively in there. They throw three different centers at you, but you got nothing from your forwards either. It wasn't just Jesse. It wasn't just, you know, the great stat that you guys noted there, 39 of 55 points 
coming from two players. So let's jump in. Hold your nose here as we go inside the numbers a little bit. Duke was 30 of 55. That's 54%. Syracuse, 19 of 55. Both teams took 55 shots. One hit 30. The other hit 19. Duke was 13 of 26 from three-point range. So in the past uh, four victories that Duke has had against Syracuse, just to give you a little perspective on this, Duke has made 14, 15, 11, and now 13 three-pointers against the Orange in the last four games. And this isn't even a good three-point shooting team for Duke. They're 12th in the ACC. They were not counting on the three-point shot. And by the way, they were not looking good early from the three-point line. They were missing a bunch. They were taking a bunch. And they stuck with it. Eventually, they started to fall. And we'll give you the, the key guys that were hitting them tonight here shortly. But this is actually odd for Duke because they're not a good three-point shooting team. But Teams tend to shoot better against that zone, right? Uh, Duke absolutely throttled Syracuse on the boards, 38 to 25. It was interesting that the offensive rebounds ended up even, but Duke dominates the Orange 28-15 on the defensive side of the ball. That was to be expected. Duke's one of the best rebounding teams in the country, so that doesn't surprise me to see that, but that's what the numbers ended up with. Assists. Syracuse had seven assists in this game to 22 for Duke. And I don't want to hear Jim Beheim say that's because, you know, it's one pass guy hits a three. That's bad defense is what we saw last night. And you countered with seven assists on the night, right? Duke had 14 turnovers, which Syracuse took advantage of early. But once the score got out of hand, that didn't really end up mattering. Syracuse outscored Duke for what it's worth, 15 to six on points off turnovers. And it's not worth spit because Duke countered by going 34 of 22 in the paint. So there you have it, friends. Uh, that tells the story, but just to give you some perspective here, uh, Roach with 17 points. He goes three of seven from three-point range. Filipowski, what a player Kyle Filipowski is, big-time Syracuse recruit who ended up committing to Duke at the last minute. 14 and 12 for him tonight, 14 points for Whitehead, who goes four of six from three-point range tonight. For Syracuse, uh, not much to look at here. Joe Girard ends up with 21 points. A lot of empty calories there. A lot of threes when it didn't matter in the second half. Judah Mintz with 18 and then a big drop off there. Malik Brown with six points. Benny Williams with four points. Hema actually scored a point. Justin Taylor doesn't score. Quadir Copeland doesn't score. Uh, let's see. Malik Brown, six points. Chris Bell does not score. Chris Bell was in Bayheim's doghouse fully tonight. So that's what it looked like numbers wise, but I don't think you need to see the numbers. And look, there was a time in this game when Syracuse needed shooters in the lineup and Saimir was in and Quadir was in and Monir Hema was in. And it was just an odd lineup for Beheim to put in there. He eventually did go to the shooters lineup with Benny, Justin, Joe, Judah in there with Jesse. But uh, Jim just did not have a great game coaching tonight. He didn't make the adjustments offensively he needed. The zone was torn apart, no man-to-man. -man. The press came way too late. Syracuse should have pressed a lot earlier than they did to shake things up, get the dome crowd back into it. I mean, would that would it have mattered? I don't know. The way Duke was shooting from three, the way they were defending Jesse, uh, they were just outclassed again. And this is the worst Duke team I've seen come in here. That's a credit to what Duke has, you know, had the past few years in terms of talent, you know, the Paulo Bencaros of the world and these amazing players that Duke is. I think Kyle Filipowski is a great player. I think Whitehead's going to get drafted. Lively's going to get drafted. He was one of the highest rated recruits in the country, but they didn't have that wow star power. They usually did, but it looked like it, right? 77-55 is what it looked like uh, out there tonight. As Richard says, poor defense and few shots for Joe, Jesse, and men's Triple J. Not getting into it. I think Judah had some great moves out there. He actually hit a couple of threes in this game. He knows he's got to be more of a three-point shooter to get some serious NBA looks at this point. But that, you know, to see, let's go through the numbers here. I know we just did, but it's it's still eye-popping. Chris Bell 0 for 3. Malik Brown 3 for 7. Gerard only took nine shots. Jesse was 2 of 3. Jesse Edwards had three field goal attempts in this game. Mintz took a ton, 16. Simon Torrance 0 for 3. Benny 2 for 5. I mean, it's just the sign of not only a bad offense, but Duke was vacuuming up all the misses, right, with what we went through with the rebounding numbers. So even if you tried to establish some sort of offense and get off a shot, you know, Duke was grabbing the rebound. Al saying even Dickie V was pushing JB out the door. I don't know about that, Al. I think that was a little love fest 
for Vital, but Dave O'Brien and Vital kind of had to acknowledge at the end of the broadcast that retirement's like a discussion around here. But that was still a big, big love fest for Jim Beheim at a weird, weird time of the game. I know they're trying to fill it's the end of the game kind of thing. Good stat here from Jim, by the way. SU 9-37 and 37 against Carolina, Virginia, and Duke since joining the ACC. That is a pretty telling stat at this point. Antonio says, Beheim, we tried to ask you nicely to retire. It's not working, so now we have to ask you to get lost. Oh, boy. The sharpened spears are coming out here. Doug says, I still don't understand why Jim gave Taylor all those minutes. Yeah, Taylor wasn't in it. Uh, he grabbed a few rebounds early. You need a shooter on the floor. I understand that. But he was not in rhythm in this game. And, you know, Jim is always saying that if a player is not playing well, if he's not doing what he needs to do, uh, I think Taylor was overwhelmed, Jim. I agree with you there. Uh, I, I get it, but I also don't get it. Dave notes it here, too. Taylor and Bell just overwhelmed and overmatched tonight. Mitchell did a great job covering Gerard uh, for most of the game. Gerard did spring open off a lot of screens and did get the 21 points in this game. But like we said, empty calories on a lot of that when Syracuse was trailing. Yeah, Joe tends to shoot well in the second half when he needs to. Syracuse needed him in the first half. And, you know, what they needed is somebody else to step up tonight. I said this going into the game. I said it on the radio this week. I said it on my pregame show today. I think I even talked about it with you guys on Orange Weekly on Thursday. That someone else had to step up from the three-point line tonight. Uh, when Gerard got going, it, it was too late and it didn't matter. And Bell was the best candidate. And now Bell is in this funk uh, these past few games. Taylor couldn't get it going. He, Judah had a couple, but you can't count on him. Where's Jesse Edwards shooting threes? That was the answer, right? We needed Jesse at the three-point line again. I'm kidding. But, I mean, desperate times call for def desperate measures at this point. Brian talks about Dickie V wants Judah to stay another year and shoot 500 threes a day. Sounds like a plan to me. I mean, that's going to be the big question, guys. As we go down the stretch here, and we'll see what Syracuse does against Pitt and Clemson. If you couldn't, you know, match up against Duke, I have a hard time believing you're going to beat both of those teams. Maybe Pitt. Maybe you can beat Pitt because they actually made that a game last time. I remember Duke was up, or pardon me, Pitt was up 20 in that game. I don't think Syracuse has a shot, frankly, against Clemson. At this point, we'll see what happens when it plays out. But the big question is going to be if Judah Mintz comes back. Because if Judah comes back, if Joe takes his COVID year, if Jesse takes his COVID year, add in maybe another player or two out of the portal. Now you got a conversation about a team that can be competitive. If Judah goes, the, the house of cards falls in, right? So I think a lot of that, Jim Beheim's status, what we think about this team going forward is going to hinge on the decision that Judah Mintz makes. So what you have to do is you've got to get Judah some big time NIL money. You've got to make it worth his while to stay here as opposed to going to the pros. He's not going to be a first round draft pick. I can tell you that flat out. I can predict that on February 18th, he will not be a first round draft pick. If he wants to be a second round pick and play in the G league and play professional basketball, that's his prerogative. I'm not telling him not to do that. But I feel like if he stayed another year, developed a shot on a higher level than, you know, playing in, you know, somewhere in, you know, Podunk USA in the G League, and you can give him some serious NIL money to convince him to do that, then I think we got something. And then I think you got something. But uh, there's a lot of uh, bigger issues out there, certainly for Syracuse at this point. That great stat about being 9-37 and 37 against those three great teams, uh, not going to be solved by one player. Remember, Syracuse does not have – one player in the class of 2023 recruiting wise, because they had so many young players come in this year. That's part of it, but that's still a pretty telling stat at this point. Tim says the state of Syracuse basketball can be summed up by what Vital said. He hadn't been to the dome since 2017. And that says it all. Uh, Jesse overwhelmed by the doubling as Michelle notes here. Uh, Chris, no, come on. There are 400 coaches I would take before Rick Pitino at this point. Come on. Give me a break with the Rick Patino stuff. There's so many other coaches you would take instead of that guy for a variety of reasons. All right, let's 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 not go slumming here. David says Duke played great. It would be tough for anybody to beat. Bayhine had a bad game coaching against a first-year head coach. You know, John Shire is a good coach. I think Duke's in good hands at this point. Uh, let's see. Love Dickie V, but he talks too much. I mean, that's Dick Vitale for you, right? Dave O'Brien did the best he could to reel him in, but uh, once you get Vital going, uh, it's hard to get him back. Ron says, how many times did Duke score while Syracuse was walking back to play what they call defense? The answer, too many. 
right? Jeff says Duke recruits three point shooters. Syracuse fails like they did not having a spot for Kevin Herter is, uh, I believe, yeah, Kevin Herter. Uh, I'll be at the Clemson game. There you go, Jeff. Still going out to support your team, even though they're a little frustrating right now. Uh, let's see. Judah's not strong enough for the NBA. Definitely not. Doesn't mean these guys don't go and we'll figure it out at the next level. Somebody would take them, but uh, I think we're talking second round pick uh, for sure at this point. Mickey says, let's buy a team. Adam Weitzman sitting there courtside. Great to see DeMar Hamlin at the JMA Wireless Dome tonight. He was hanging out on Marshall Street before the game. There was pictures of him at the Orange Crate hanging with the students. Uh, I mean, that just warms your heart to see that. I mean, a, a positive note on, you know, it was a bad night for Syracuse to have DeMar Hamlin up and going at games, mixing in with the people, sitting courtside. Uh, that was fantastic. Those Buffalo Bills fans certainly uh, smiled seeing that. They did show that tape of Bayheim versus Vital. They actually played a one-on-one -on -one basketball game for charity. This is back in 1991. I believe it was in Rochester, as a matter of fact. And, uh, you know, we don't see things like that anymore. And, and Bayheim beat them 15-3, to three, by the way. It wasn't a fair fight. Uh, Dave says the worst part is it's not even about playing time with transferring now. It's more about the cash. Cash money, baby. What a dough. Was that great song? From the 90s, cash rules everything around me. Cream, get the money. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Yeah, Dave Bing was in the house. Dave Bing was there. Buddy Bayheim was there. Cole Swider was there. Uh, I'm going to forget a few names that were there. Duke usually brings out the stars. Not as star-studded as usual, but hey, look, the students showed up. Shout out to Otto's Army, who filled uh, the student sections. I think 10 different sections had students in it at the JMA Wireless Dome tonight. 31,000. Still great to see that. It's not 35K. It's not a record setter. Uh, by far the biggest crowd at the Dome this year, the biggest crowd in college basketball this year. I don't think – I'm kind of curious what the weight game is going to get because, remember, that's the 20th anniversary celebration of the 2003 National Championship team. I think people will want to see that team honor. Jerry McNamara, Hakeem Warwick getting their jerseys retired. I just don't know what Syracuse will have left to play for at that point. Uh, Wake lost today to Miami. So Syracuse and Wake are now nine and seven. Duke moves up. They're 10 and six in ACC play, but uh, Syracuse uh, falling out of any serious postseason conversations here. Rob says, tough to watch tonight. Credit Duke for making a statement. Disappointing loss, but beat Clemson and Pitt, which won't be easy, and you're still in the ballpark. Appreciate the enthusiasm there. It's hard to have that, though, when you can't even beat this team and can't even show up against this team. Those two are on the road. And Pitt and Clemson are tough, tough matchups for Syracuse. Just the X's and O's of it at this point. Jim says, put the students courtside. I cannot agree with that more, Jim. Uh, Mike says, bring in Mike Hopkins to coach. Different Mike says, post-game ESPN was even commenting on no adjustments. Yes, they were. I saw a little bit of that before I came in to talk to you guys. Uh, Josh just says, I don't know what to say. Besides, I'm sick of this overall, right? Adam Weitzman, will he still be a big supporter after Bayheim retires? That is a great question, David. Let's leave that up there for a second. I, whoops, wrong one. Hi, Mike, again, but let's go back to David's question. Um, I don't know is the answer to that. I think so. I think that he has really become a big fan of Syracuse overall, but a lot of what we're seeing now is because he's friends with Bayheim, right? So when Bayheim steps aside, whenever that is, I, I think Weitzman will continue to do it. I've asked that question of people who would know I haven't asked Adam that directly. Next time I get the opportunity to talk to him, I will. Um, to his credit, he's pretty accessible. I think so is my answer, but I don't want to speak uh, out of school there. I think so is the answer to that. And I, and I hope so because, look, you need a big-time booster like that. Who knows what NIL rules are coming our way here with the NCAA just, you know, like <laughs> doing what they do, which is nothing about all this stuff. And now they're going to pretend to come in with some new rules and try and figure this thing out. So who knows what the NIL landscape looks like over the next couple of years. But no matter what it looks like, you need a Weitzman. You, frankly, you need four or five of them, right? It's great that he's the high-profile guy, but Alabama's got 10 of them, right? Syracuse needs a few more. Easier said than done at this point. Uh, Marty says, uh, got to win the ACC. Pit game sold out. Tough place to play. Marty, that's a great point. Pitt has become a tough place to play again. That program was in shambles.
for the past few years, even coming into this year, they were picked to be bottom of the league, right? The Oakland Zoo is alive again. Game sold out, as you noted. Those fans are crazy. And I got Syracuse that has to prove itself on the road against two of the best teams in the ACC. Sets up a hell of a story if Syracuse can do it, but uh, we're fading fast here. And you know what? Last year, I let, let me be honest with you guys here. What good would it do to put this team in the NIT? Which they're not even guaranteed of that at this point, by the way. Not that I, I want to think of the right way to put this. What I think was appropriate, how about this? By Syracuse going last year with a losing record. They didn't play in the NIT. They didn't play in any postseason tournaments, right? Now, we'll see what happens down the stretch. I'm not throwing in the towel here, but uh, shout out to my guy, Brian, if he's watching. Fellow Z89 alum. 89 won the polls for me. When he came on Orange Weekly with us in, in the comments section here, and he was talking about what a strong run in the NIT would be, and I'm just looking at that like, is that how far this, this program has fallen? Like, we're rooting for strong runs in the NIT. I think if Syracuse, even if they finish with a winning record, should not play in the NIT or the CBI, or any of this stuff. Just walk away, right? All that matters is the NCAA tournament. Don't even bother with the NIT. That's just my opinion, but we'll see where it ends up. Vince says, shameful performance, awful team this year. For God's sake, play man when the other team shoots 13 threes. Uh, back to Michael says, Jim, would you like to see that? NIT is still doable? No, I wouldn't, honestly. I do not want to see this team in the NIT. I think it's a waste of time. I know it's a young team that would get some taste of postseason play, but not the postseason play you need to be, right? Dale thinks they'll win out and still make the NIT. Brad asked a fair question here. Can they run any type of offense? They need to. They need to. I don't know why you don't. I mean, tw seven assists to 22 for Duke. Jesse Edwards took three shots. You had to figure out a way to get him open. I know it's easier said than done, but you know that's why they pay millions of dollars to coach this thing, to figure that out, to run plays. Right? Syracuse didn't have a lot of big guys to counter there. You can't put Hema out there at the same time as Jesse. And But I don't know. Figure it out. Figure it out. I mean, Jim just got flat. He didn't even get flat out coached. He didn't, what, what was he even doing over there, to be honest with you? Like, what did we see that was different? That was any kind of adjustment. I know they went deeper on the bench tonight. Quadir came in. But like uh, somebody brought it up, uh, they were even saying on ESPN after the game, what, what adjustments were made out there. And look, that's such an easy thing for fans to say, right? Make adjustments, right? Do something, right? That great line from Spaceballs, do something, do something. Like that's easy for us to say, but it didn't happen. We didn't see that out there tonight, offensively or defensively at this point, right? There you go, Scott. Let's get a little lacrosse uh, nugget in there. Spolina's goal today. Ooh, that thing was pretty. Uh, Syracuse lost to Maryland, but only lost by three goals. That was, uh, I think, a great effort from them. And, uh, folks, the Syracuse women's lacrosse team, I know it's early, but that's a legit national title contender. Keep an eye on the ladies. They beat Maryland and Northwestern already. Those are two top five teams. They got to stay healthy, but that's a title contender. If you're looking for a team that's going to be playing in the real tournament, uh, look for that team. And I, I think the men's team might get there. But as Scott notes, you got to win those face-offs, right? Maryland's got one of the best Fogos in the country, but uh, yeah, you got to win those things. So uh, is it lacrosse season yet? Are you starting to ask that question, or do you believe something can be salvaged for the rest of this basketball season? It does not appear that the NCAA tournament's going to be in their future. They needed this one, and they're going to need Pitt and Clemson and Wake Forest. Uh, Georgia Tech, I guess you could throw in there. Georgia Tech's a terrible team, but you, know, you can't be stubbing your toe and losing to that team at this point, right? So we'll see where that goes. As Tony says, only question is what coach could they get that's not in the program, not many that would come here for $2 million. And Tony, look, this is a great point because Jim Beheim's a bargain. He is a bargain. He's like the 35th highest paid coach in college basketball. So in the realm of, I hate when people say this honestly about this situation, but I, I think it applies here in the, be careful what you wish for department. If you now, I think if you just put Jerry McNamara in there, you you could pay him that and be fine. But if you want to go out there and get a big name or get an up and comer, uh, you're going to have to open up the pocketbooks. So uh, I don't know if Adam Weissman's uh, got that kind of money, but that's what you're going to have to do. 
because they have had a because Bayhai makes so much money from other entities, from media deals, the IMG deal that he has, um, Nike, all sorts of other things. Syracuse has never had to pay him that much salary wise because he makes up for it in other ways. But if you bring in a new coach, you're, you're going to have to do it. Dave says, no NIT, please. It's not like they're going to try and play some players who haven't got much run. It'll be the same boring offense. Robert says, not sure if you've seen the Syracuse ladies play, but they're amazing. We were just talking about that. Syracuse women's lacrosse, true national championship contender at this point. And uh, I think Felicia will get Jack's women's basketball team is starting to come around too. I don't think they're going to make the tournament either, but we'll get there. We'll get there with that. They've got some tough games coming down the stretch too that we'll keep an eye on. Tough loss to Florida State the other night that probably took him out of contention, uh, but we will see. Uh, Joe says, sorry, late to the party, but I wonder why attendance is down. Maybe because of the horrible product on the court. Hard to argue with that. Michael Antonio wants to know if we can use NIL for coaches, right? Don't tell uh, Weitzman that's what we're using for. Hey, can we buy uh, like 15 million? You know, no, no, no reason. Just, you know, you just put it in the general fund there and uh, we'll send you a receipt at some point. Uh, David says, my son and his wife came all the way from Virginia to watch the game at the Dome and left early. Well, I hope uh, the post-game uh, beverages and meals uh, were better than the game experience, David. And I think we'll end on that note, friends. Uh, great to see you again. Thanks for your great comments. Again, let me tell you what's coming up here in the near future, post-game-wise and uh, otherwise here. Right. So uh, our next broadcast will be just want to check the game time here, make sure I got it right. Wednesday, Wednesday night, Syracuse goes to Clemson. That's a seven o'clock tip. So we'll be with you uh, after that game Wednesday night on these same channels you're watching or you can watch later on YouTube uh, if you want to check out the replay. But then you don't get to comment live like so many great comments we've seen tonight. Uh, Wednesday, we'll be with you. Orange Weekly, don't forget streams. On these same channels, Thursdays at noon-ish, noon-ish, sometimes I'm a little late, Thursdays at noon-ish to talk all things Syracuse sports. We'll talk more lacrosse and other things going on when we do that. So uh, those are our next couple of broadcasts. Hope you can be here. But just a reminder, if you do miss it, it does archive on all these channels you're watching. We put up a post on Syracuse.com. I'll embed this in my recap on Syracuse.com. If you ever missed the show, it's uh, very easy to catch on the replay. Have yourself a great rest of your weekend, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching Syracuse Basketball Post Game, Presented by Krause Health, Syracuse falls to Duke tonight, 77-55. to We'll talk to you next time.